could bikes soon use AI to think for themselves? Well, maybe. So Shimano has filed a patent for a device which apparently uses AI to control a dropper seat post, front suspension, and saddle tilt. The invention is designed to learn a rider's preferences in different situations. It would then be able to automatically adjust the seat post, suspension, and saddle by itself mid-ride. The patent drawings also show a small screen attached to the handlebars. This screen would allow the riders to give feedback on the changes via thumbs up and thumbs down buttons. This feedback would then help the device learn and make better decisions. So we were talking about this beforehand and you started listing numerous products that have automatic controls already. Yeah, so SRAM flight attendant for your suspension, uh, Shimano Auto Shift uh, for changing gears automatically on some of the e-bikes. You've got Magiro Elect, which I think was in 2014. Uh, and then I think... Is that suspension? Suspension as well, yeah. yeah. Um, Fox does one as well. I can't remember what it's called. Um, and then you've got Exposure, React Light, where it essentially gets brighter or dimmer to save the battery, give, give you the most depending on what your, the road surface is like. I'm assuming the only difference with this one is that it's AI controlled. And then learns. But then I'm conflicted about that because you wanted to learn, surely. I mean, I would just think somebody at one of these companies know more than me. So they would just set it up to work right. I, I tried to do a bit of digging on the patent. It's obviously uh, we're not patent specialists and there's always going to be limited amounts of information that we can consume to understand it. It seems that the patent is is in relation to a control module or a thinking module that controls a telescopic tube, which is presumably the dropper post and the suspension. Um, and it's, I guess, the AI or the machine learning part of that that they're, they're trying to be, or they're trying to uh, make as a unique product. Because uh, obviously, like you said, they've already got auto shift, so there's something which automatically changes gears yes. on the e-bike stuff. Um, I, think it's, I, th I think it's interesting that they're looking at that as a thing. Um, I guess looking at the idea of, um, w again, when we were talking earlier, I, I, the example I used was like cross-country mountain, bi mountain biking. Someone like Pidcock or whoever else are absolute experts and therefore know the best times to adjust the suspension and adjust this and adjust that, although more likely they're probably just leaving everything as is. So the, I guess the idea that they're thinking of is that a computer can help make those decisions on behalf of the person, although you're giving it feedback, so it's actually around your preferences. It, it, that's, it's, yeah, that's what I mean. Like The question is, is it a gimmick? Yeah, yes. Uh, it's some stuff's good. You mean, like, I, I'm really bad for, on mountain biking, like, having my suspension locked out when I'm riding up the trails and then just when I get to the top, forgetting to open it up again, and then halfway down the trail, I'm trying to reach off with my hand to kind of... Unlock it again. I'm the opposite. So I did a bit of research on this and the, the, the stuff that I read suggested that an unlocked suspension, you don't lose any power yes, from having uh, a suspension right. unlocked. So I just have it unlocked all of the time whenever I've done mountain biking. I've heard that as well recently and I do kind of, yeah, understand. So, but it's more of that, that's a perception. That's where, where I'm worried with AI because if you then say, it might be doing really good stuff for you and then you click, no, no, you don't like it or you like certain things, and then all of a sudden it's, you might as well be setting it to work worse. I don't, uh, yeah, it's, it's like high pressure sensors. It's nice to have, but it's not really, I don't know. Uh, but who, who's it going to be for? That's what I don't quite understand. I don't, like, I can't imagine I would want to go, let's just say mountain biking, or even gravel riding, extreme gravel riding, let's call it, where I'm going to have a dropper post and suspension. I, I can't really think of a scenario where I would want the bike to make a decision for me on the tilt of the saddle and things like that. The, the tilt I don't get at all. I mean, surely that just changes your bike fit. Well, I, I w yeah, the, I guess it, I'm, I'm assuming it's suggesting that if you're climbing up a really steep climb, it'll change the angle the, or something the, or other. The photo but shows the a gravel bike. The bike fit side of it yeah. is worrying. I mean, I, I could understand with the mountain bike where your saddle, saddle's tilted backwards for how you, for descending, but I mean, that was on the ground. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do with it. But then also, there's a lot of patents going all the time. It's what, what makes it to production and what's actually 
going to work. I mean, I know in cars you get, Audi did it years ago with the electromagnetic suspension where it stiffens up around the corners and things like that. So if they do it right, um, like the, the SRAM flight attendant, I think, you I mean, could be worthwhile for somebody that's not got a team dialing everything and knowing what they're doing. It just automatically adjusts as you ride. So it gets stiffer. I mean, you can optimize it for, for pedaling. You can optimize it for descending. To try and put an example into where this technology might be used would be if I'm riding my bike on the flat on a very luscious, lovely gravel path, which is not very bumpy, the suspension or the seat post would just be rigid. Seat post fully extended, suspension firm, so that I'm not bouncing around all over the place. But if the bike detects that then I throw it into a downhill trail, it knows to loosen off the suspension yeah. and maybe drop the drop a post but- but even with that AI, I think the other systems like the Fox and the Gura and the SRAM already does that. Yeah. Because it just essentially it can monitor. I mean, it's the same as, for instance, uh, the Magu- uh, sorry, the exposure light. That's just got a sensor in there, like accelerometer. So it realizes whether you're climbing or descending and how rough the terrain is. And based off that, it makes the light either brighter or dimmer. Right. Um, there's clever stuff out there. It's just I- I'd be more interested in gearing and to see for people that are training or racing, it's not me, but Francis and James and all of them lot, um, where similar to turbo trainers, but you've got erg mode. So let's say you have to ride at a set amount of watts where your, your gearing is controlled or cadence and things like that um, to kind of, so not for performance, but... But you'd yeah. still have to have something like the um, like a planetary gear or what, what's the classified wheels something which can change into load because otherwise you might be you know pushing 350 watts or doing a sprint Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the gear changes if it's a traditional front mech rear mech Mm -hmm. you you might be out of the saddle doing a full effort sprint and all of a sudden it decides to change gear which is not going to be a good idea but i I don't think you need ai for that you you would just need i mean computers could do that already your garment knows whether you're standing or seated if you've got power meets, the power pedals, the the rallies. So there, there's parameters you can set without the AI thing. I think the extra bit that it gives you is that it's going to learn from what you're doing, but then it's, yeah, I, I, just, I don't know how, there's a learned in terms of how does it make it better? Surely it'll know from day one, these big companies will be able to set it up to be optimum. Somebody like Pitcock could probably outperform it and then it could learn for him. But for me, it's never going to, it's going to tell me I'm wrong. Well, no, because it would learn from you. Yeah, <laughs> what not to do. <laughs> so so for me, I think generally AI is being used as a marketing gimmick. Um, I had a conversation. I don't think, I can't remember if I've, I think I've told you about this, but I don't think we've ever discussed it on a podcast. So a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, um, works for a very, very large tech company. And one of his specializations is uh AI and all of the genius that that stuff does. And I had a conversation with him about AI and I was like, you know, is it something we need to be concerned about or, you know, what even is it? Like, like what's, what's the big deal? And he basically said, basically everything that we know about AI as we normal people consumers isn't AI, it is machine learning, which is a completely different thing. It's not actually artificial intelligence it's just Mm. an algorithm a very complex set of algorithms where it learns a preference and then applies that preference which is not ai um and as a result of that i just feel like it is just the new marketing buzzword it's like oh it can it's an ai this and it's an ai that it's it's not it's just a very complex algorithm yeah